Hello Internet! I know I forecasted it in my last review, but I wanted to start with a close-up. Start with something a little abstract. And I just admire the needle-like properties of this plant. You may be thinking, if you didn't already know, and I know you do, it's going to be in the title after all, but there's a certain piney quality, maybe cedar or fir type quality, these needle-like leaves of California sagebrush. Artemisia californica is native to the coastal Southern California region, although it does go inland to uh, at least maybe the midway point in the state west to east. And here at the Conejo Valley Botanic Garden is a pretty interior sort of climate. Very rather unique to the coastal area because we're only like, I don't know, 20 miles from the ocean. If you go 20 miles inland, on the Oxnard Plateau, you would feel, be feeling the cool breeze, or Santa Barbara, like the whole of Santa Barbara. Very mellow, nice. It's a nice day trip to Santa Barbara. But here, we have some coastal mountains which block the oceanic influence. And so we have hot, dry climates where California sagebrush makes up as much as 40% of the larger plant community, along with oak trees, purple sage, and a variety of wildflowers, and California buckwheat. And during this time of year, it is difficult to find in Conejo Valley a good looking example of California sagebrush because everything is in dire water conservation mode during the summer. This one's doing pretty well and unfortunately the contrast is a little bit harsh. I'm gonna zoom in again. Because this one is doing so well because it's in the shade. It mm, primarily grows in the shade here. It is directly under an oak tree, about three of them. And I just don't seem to be able to find a spot where my camera will focus. Oh no. Um, there, I like that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna zoom out again because California sagebrush is a subshrub. Doesn't grow much taller than, I'd say, two feet. So, by contrast, purple sage can grow up to five feet tall. And in sharing, directly sharing this hillside is a variety of purple sage that regularly reaches three feet. But it's still an essential plant here this California sagebrush and it's I'm quite fond of it because of the feathery texture to it when it's really healthy and ha happy with intermittent very little summer water it retains a blue green gray color to it which is really quite nice in sun or shade and it tolerates a wide range of soil types from hard clay to sand. It'll do it. Especially if you water it very carefully. In hard clay it doesn't need much water because if the clay is properly taken care of it retains a lot of water. In sand if you let the roots really stretch out it does pretty well with in irregular watering maybe twice a month and it shades 
the sand, much like its relative Artemisia pycnocephala, which I would very much like to give you a video, but it'll probably have to wait until spring because the only one I know of is in my garden and it's going to be a long time before it get, gets looking good and again. But that's okay too. California sagebrush was an essential medicinal plant in this local region here often used for ailments like fever or cold. And while reports I've read about it say that a tea made of California sagebrush is extremely bitter and horrible, clearly they've never tried a sagebrush tea of any of the other native sagebrushes in the area, which are about three times more bitter. I find California sagebrush makes a rather nice herbal, maybe slightly bitter tea. It's excellent fighting against um, upset stomach caused by abdominal infections like food poisoning. And also is great for pulmonary complaints like a cold or allergies, really. Unless you're allergic, that's always a hang up with uh, herbal medicine. So, I guess some suggestions for uh, planting with this. Definitely somewhere in the Midwest to the West. It doesn't tolerate daily rain, <clears throat> but it tolerates irrigation well enough and is probably one of the few native Californians that I would actually say that drip lines are okay for. I still don't like them, but this would do okay on them. It's short, so pathway borders are a pretty good bet for this, although you wouldn't want to do exclusively this. It does flower in spring, but the flowers are pretty darn minuscule at half a centimeter at max. They are a mild to butter yellow, similar to mugwort and other artemisias in size and shape, which is tiny little buds you're actually looking at some spent flower heads, whether you know it or not. It's about, unless you know, really know what you're looking for, it's hard to tell the leaves from the flowers. It all looks great though. It's a really lovely plant. I'm sorry that you have to see it so yellowed, but that doesn't last, especially if you take care of it. Um, the flowers, actually are a great nectar and pollen source for bees, local bees usually. No attraction for hummer, hummingbirds unless they come for the insects that shelter in the plants, but it also attracts all other form of life because it is such an excellent insect shelter. Lizards finding the shade and also the insects, insect predators, like lizards, unfortunately. In my garden, it's mostly lizards because the lizards eat the insectoid predators of pest insects, and so I get lots of earwigs. And unfortunately, the lizards eat anything in the intermediate range that would eat earwigs, like praying mantises, ladybugs, you name it. Very unfortunate. Uh, I've rambled long enough. This is a good one, trust me. I'll do a follow-up in the spring and prove it to you. But this uh, two foot by two foot plant is a great ground cover. Great accent plant, just with its really interesting foliage and stuff. <clears throat> Any last comments on this one? That's great aromatic. I love crushing the leaves and makes excellent incense. It does well in tinctures as well. Of course, you really better know your stuff before you start doing anything to deal with herbal medicine. But this is definitely not one to be overlooked anytime soon if you have my opinion on it. So I'll see you guys next week with a new video. 
have a good one.